The moving van sat idled by the curb, its rear door gaping open like a hungry maw. I stared in disbelief as the last remnants of my life were carted out of the house I had called home for thirty years. What is going on here? I demanded, hands trembling as I gripped the strap of my purse. Elliot turned towards me, his expression one of feigned surprise. The smug grin tugging at the corners of his mouth said it all. He knew exactly what he was doing. Harper, you're back early, he said coolly, stuffing his hands into the pockets of his chinos. I bristled at his casual tone. Don't harper me. What have you done? Before he could respond, a lilting voice cut through the tension. There you are, Elliot, darling. A statuesque blonde in a ridiculously short sundress slinked up beside him, looping her arm through his. My stomach twisted into a knot as her identity became clear. Marla, Elliot's mistress from the office, the one he had sworn was ancient history. I should have known better than to trust his lies. You... you sold our home? I choked out the words, praying this was some cruel joke. After everything we've been through together? Elliot opened his mouth, but I barreled on, anger and hurt swelling within me. The sacrifices I made when your business failed, caring for your awful mother when she fell ill, pouring my life into this... this house, into our marriage? I was nearly shouting now, hot tears streaking my cheeks. Marla wrapped her arms around Elliot in a sickening display of possession. Don't get hysterical, Harper. It's just business. Just business. After thirty years of partnership, of struggling and persevering side by side, he was tossing me aside like a used rag. For her. I rounded on Elliot, squaring my shoulders. You lying, cheating snake, you're willing to destroy everything we built together for... for this? Elliot avoided my gaze, the muscles in his jaw twitching. He knew he had been caught red-handed in his web of deceit. The seconds ticked by in silence, the only sound the sudden clatter as the movers heaved the last of our belongings into the van. It was really happening. The man I had loved and trusted above all else had betrayed me in the cruelest way imaginable. Marla sneered at me over Elliot's shoulder. Time to move on, Harper. This is our new beginning. Their smugness was more than I could bear. Squaring my shoulders, I jutted my chin defiantly at the pair. You want a new beginning? Fine, but mark my words, this isn't over. Turning on my heel, I stalked away from the home I had poured my heart and soul into, leaving the shattered remains of my marriage behind. The game was on. Elliot and his mistress had started a war, and I would be damned if I went down without a fight. I barely slept that night, that the image of Elliot smugly carrying on with his mistress scorched into my mind. How could the man I had loved, the father of my children, be so callous and cruel? My anger simmered as I paced the guest room of Alex's apartment, the temporary living situation doing nothing to soften the sting of Elliot's betrayal. I had given that man everything, my unwavering support through hard times, my love and loyalty for three decades. And this was how he repaid me? The shrill ring of my cell phone sliced through the tense silence. Jenna's name flashed across the screen. Mom? Her voice wobbled with unshed tears. Is it true what Alex told me? Dad left you for some, some young thing? My chest tightened. Having to explain this nightmare to my children was almost worse than living through it myself. They had always looked up to their father, despite his litany of shortcomings over the years. I'm so sorry, honey. Your father and I were getting divorced. I cringed at how matter-of-fact the words sounded, like I was reporting groceries rather than the imminent dissolution of my marriage. A angry silence crackled down the line. When Jenna spoke again, her tone was low and uncompromising. That selfish bastard, after everything you sacrificed for him and this family? She broke off in a choked sob. Mom, I'm coming over. We're going to get through this together. Thank you, sweetie, I murmured, feeling a surge of pride at my daughter's fierce loyalty. At least I could count on my children, despite their father's despicable actions. A few hours later, Jenna burst into the apartment, red-faced and bristling. Alex sat slouched on the sofa, his expression one of carefully restrained rage. That low-life piece of scum, Jenna spat, flinging herself into the armchair beside me, throwing away thirty years of marriage for a cheap fling? Unfreaking believable Jenna, Alex warned in a low voice. No, Alex, I won't stay quiet. He humiliated Mom in the worst way. She wheeled towards me, eyes blazing. 
please tell me you're taking him for every last penny. I studied my daughter's fierce protectiveness and loyalty, my heart swelling despite the misery of my circumstances. This was the family I cared about, the ones who had my back no matter what. Squaring my shoulders, I returned Jenna's determined stare. You're damn right I am. If that rat bastard Elliot thinks he can just discard me and our marriage, he has another thing coming. My gaze slid towards Alex, who gave a somber nod of agreement. A muscle twitched in his clenched jaw. We're with you every step of the way, Mom. Just let us know whatever you need. In that moment, I felt a surge of resolve. Elliot and his mistress had detonated a bomb that shattered my life into pieces, but if he thought I would go down without a fight, he was gravely mistaken. It was time to show my soon-to-be ex-husband exactly why hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Squaring my shoulders, I looked my children in the eyes. Here's what we're going to do. The divorce proceedings were uglier than I could have imagined. Elliot fought me tooth and nail, contesting everything from asset division to alimony. His smug arrogance in the courtroom made my blood boil. Your Honor, my client has devoted her entire adult life to supporting Mr. Monroe's endeavors, often at great personal cost, my lawyer argued, throwing a pointed look at Elliot. She put her career on hold to raise their children, manage the household, and provide emotional support through failed business ventures. She is more than entitled to an equitable share of the marital assets. Elliot's eyes narrowed into serpentine slits. That condescending sneer I knew all too well twisted his lips. He seemed to forget I sat just a few feet away, watching his every arrogant micro-expression. With all due respect, his lawyer oozed, Mr. Monroe's recent financial windfall stems from the prudent sale of the marital home he purchased prior to the marriage. My client's new business partner, he threw a deferential nod at that blonde bimbo Marla, simply provided the funds to unlock the asset's latent value. Mrs. Monroe's demands are exorbitant, given her minimal contributions. You lying sack of scum, I mentally hurled at my soon-to-be ex-husband. I burned with impotent rage, wanting nothing more than to hurl the nearest heavy object at his insufferably smug face. The arrogance. To dismiss three decades of selfless partnership, putting his wants ahead of my own dreams, raising our children almost single-handedly, and dragging his worthless carcass back from the brink of financial ruin as minimal contributions. White-hot fury lanced through me. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Alex leaning forward, his hands knotted into white-knuckled fists atop his knees. Jenna put a calming hand on his arm, her own eyes glinting with outrage. "'Mom's the one who kept this family afloat while you were off chasing yet another get-rich-quick scheme,' Alex hissed under his breath, low enough for just me to hear. "'Don't you dare try to rewrite history in that condescending way.' I squeezed his hand in gratitude, stoking the fires of my own resolve. We had fought too hard, sacrificed too much of our lives, to let Elliot sweep it all under the rug now. If he thought I would go down without a fight, he had underestimated the wrong woman. The following days and weeks were consumed by a whirlwind of paperwork and legal appointments. With Alex and Jenna's assistance, I poured over financial statements, compiled records, and documented everything. No stone was left unturned. Gone were the days of meekly accepting Elliot's decisions, of surrendering pieces of myself for his desires and ego. I would expose every lie, every despicable act for the world to see. Elliot Monroe was about to learn a brutal lesson. You didn't get to spend thirty years leeching off a spouse's sacrifices and loyalty, discarding them like a used rag for your own selfish gratification, without suffering immense consequences. Not on my watch. It was a new day. Armed with evidence and sheer determination, I was finally taking control of my destiny. Elliot's reckoning was coming, and nothing would stand in my way. The Westbrook Charity Gala was usually the highlight of my social calendar, a chance to dress up, rub elbows with the town's elite, and raise money for good causes. This year, my motivations were decidedly different. From the moment I arrived, eyes followed me like hawks, whispers rippling through the crowd, Word of Elliot's scandalous betrayal had spread like wildfire thanks to the divorce proceedings. My cheeks burned, but I lifted my chin defiantly, gliding across the marble floor with practiced grace. Out of the corner of my eye I spotted them. Elliot looking disarmingly handsome in his tuxedo, 
with that blonde bimbo Marla draped over his arm like a damn trophy. She stuck out like a sore thumb in that garish red dress that clung inappropriately to every curve. My fists clenched involuntarily at my sides. How dare they show their faces here after demolishing everything we'd built? The sheer arrogance of it made my blood boil. Elliot caught my withering stare and quickly averted his eyes, suddenly finding the crystal chandelier overhead fascinating. Good, let the craven weasel squirm under my gaze for once. Marla, however, sneered back at me, her scarlet lips curving into a mocking smile as she ran her ringed fingers along Elliot's arm in a possessive display. My jaw clenched hard enough to crack teeth. The MC's voice abruptly boomed from the speakers, beckoning everyone to their seats for the program's commencement. I took a fortifying breath, smoothing my hands over my evening gown. It was now or never. Abandoning my usual table, I weaved through the clusters of impeccably dressed guests until I stood front and center on the stage, microphone in hand. Good evening, everyone, I began in a tone of forced civility. As you all may know, I'm going through a difficult transition in my personal life currently. Elliot went rigid in his seat, realization dawning across his features. Marla's eyes narrowed to serpentine slits, her over-glossed lips parting in outrage. My voice carried flawlessly to every corner of the vaulted ballroom. My husband of thirty years has chosen to abandoning our marriage vows, our family, and everything we built together in pursuit of. I threw Marla a pointed look, more self-indulgent desires. A shocked murmur rippled through the crowd like a Mexican wave. Elliot's ruddy face colored even further under the spotlight's glare. While I'm sure he and his new associate are quite proud of their clandestine dalliances, I wouldn't feel right letting such a prominent member of our community get away with such appalling deceptions. Marla shot to her feet, perfectly plucked eyebrows slanted furiously over her pale blue eyes. How dare you drag us through the mud this way, she shouted, planting her hands on her canted hips. This is low, even for you. A vindicated smirk tugged at my lips. Low? I echoed over the crowd's stunned gasps. Lo is cheating on your wife of three decades and abandoning your family for a cheap fling. Lo is lying, gaslighting, and manipulating those closest to you for your own selfish appetites. I leveled my gaze at Marla and the pinched, crimson-faced Elliot behind her. No, revealing the unvarnished truth about your contemptible actions. That is justice. Maybe next time you'll both think twice before carelessly destroying human lives in pursuit of your transient desires. Turning on my heel, I surrendered the stage to thunderous applause and whistles, watching in satisfaction as Elliot buried his flaming face in his hands. The gloves were off. In front of the entire town, I had drawn the battle lines. Let the war begin. The gavel struck the wooden sound block with a decisive thump, echoing through the courtroom. My hands trembled as Judge Reynolds cleared his throat, shuffling through the stack of documents on his bench. In the matter of the divorce proceedings between Harper Monroe and Elliot Monroe, his voice carried the weight of finality. Elliot sat ramrod straight beside his lawyer, his expression unreadable. I forced myself to meet his gaze, letting none of the turbulent mix of anger, grief, and vindication roiling inside me show. After months of vicious legal battles, falsified financial records, and levels of deception I'd never imagined possible from the man I once loved, it all came down to this moment. My grip tightened around the armrests until my knuckles shone bone white. Having reviewed all evidence and testimony, I thereby order Mr. Monroe to pay Mrs. Monroe a lump sum of four million dollars, the judge's ruling sliced through the thick tension like a hot knife. In addition, Mrs. Monroe shall receive 60% of the liquid assets and investment portfolios accumulated during the marriage. A guttural sound of disbelief escaped Elliot's lips. His rictus mask of composure finally shattered, giving way to flushed impotent rage. Suck on that, you arrogant prick, I mentally hurled at him. Furthermore, Judge Reynolds spoke over Elliot's sputtering, Mrs. Monroe is awarded full ownership of the Monroe residence on Summit Hill Road, free and clear of all liens or encumbrances. My heart stuttered in my chest as the enormity hit me. He was giving me back the home Elliot had so gleefully sold out from under me. Our home, the place we had raised our children and built a life together for thirty years, would remain mine. Tears of sheer relief and vindication pricked my eyes. 
Alex squeezed my hand tightly beside me, a proud smile crinkling the corners of his eyes. That lying snake got exactly what he deserved, he murmured under his breath. Jenna leaned across him and enveloped me in a fierce hug, openly weeping tears of joy. Beyond them, Elliot sat utterly motionless, his face drained of all color. The full weight of his actions had finally caught up with him. As I strode triumphantly from the courtroom to raucous cheers and applause from my friends and supporters, I was vividly reminded of the scorpion and frog fable. Elliot had thoughtlessly stung me, his faithful partner who carried him across the tumultuous waters of life, and now he would drown in the consequences of his treachery. But I intended to do more than simply survive his betrayal. With this ruling, I had been afforded a new lease on life, a chance to heal, to rebuild, and to pursue all the hopes and dreams I had put on hold for that ungrateful bastard. And I would be damned if I didn't take this second chance and run with it full throttle. Six weeks later, I stood in the marble foyer of my reacquired home, drinking in the warm, familiar surroundings as the moving crew unloaded my belongings. The mover grunts and thuds providing a stark counterpoint to the eerie silence and memories that hung thick in the air. This place had been the backdrop to my once happy marriage, the birthplace of cherished family memories, unbreakable bonds between husband and wife, and dreams of growing old together. Elliot's lies and callous greed had very nearly ripped it all away. But not anymore. Tilting my chin up, I surveyed the cavernous front room, envisioning the fresh start taking shape before me. This house, this life, belonged solely to me and my children now. The shackles of deception and manipulation were finally severed. It was time to reclaim my dignity, my identity, and take that first defiant step into my bold new chapter. Just when I thought I was finally free of Elliot's treachery, the other shoe dropped with a sickening thud. You're doing what? I sputtered, gaping at Jenna over the breakfast bar. She slid a sleek brochure across the granite countertop toward me with a grim look. Dad and Marla are opening up some sort of luxury bed and breakfast. My stomach twisted into a queasy knot as I scanned the high-gloss photos advertising their premier inn and chateau in a pristine mountain setting. I could only imagine how much of my divorce settlement went into funding this mockery. That arrogant son of a bitch, I hissed under my breath. The place opens in three months, Jenna continued, fire blazing behind her eyes. Using the cash he swindled from selling our home, no less. Bitter bile burned the back of my throat. Of course that weasel Elliot wouldn't be content until he'd twisted the knife one last time, flaunting his ill-gotten trophy acquisition in a lavish new business venture. It was the ultimate insult. In that fateful moment, something inside me hardened like carbon under immense pressure. Elliot had made his move, ramming home just how little our marriage and my sacrifices had ever meant. The gloves were officially off. You know what? I said, looking up at Jenna with a steely determination. Two can play at this game. Over the next couple weeks, I quietly put my business skills to work. Between the millions from my divorce settlement, unbridled passion, and an unquenchable drive to crush Elliot once and for all, those old familiar thrills of strategizing and building something from the ground up reignited hot in my veins. Before long, the pieces fell into place with impeccable precision, the perfect location secured, permits and licenses filed, and employees hired. Elliot's smug comeuppance had become my singular obsession. Of course, I kept the entire operation strictly under wraps, waiting for the perfect opportunity to skin the cat. That chance arose when Alex called me with a frantic update. Mom, you'll never guess what. They invited us to some big launch party for their stupid inn. Elliot and his mistress, foolishly dangling their bait. I could taste the sweet promise of revenge on my tongue. Did they now? I purred into the phone. My son's confusion was palpable. Two weeks later, Elliot and I stood amidst the opulent trappings of his Monroe Inn and Resort launch gala. With a bored flick of the champagne flute, I signaled Alex to join us by the towering picture windows. Elliot's serpentine gaze immediately narrowed with displeasure, so predictable. I must congratulate you both on this quaint establishment, I began. My tone dripped with sugary condescension. Marla bristled, straightening the tight bodice of her obscene cocktail dress. Why, Harper, how big of you to join our celebration? Elliot merely stared at me, dumbfounded. 
although I can't help feeling it's missing. Something. I pause dramatically, watching fresh color bloom across his cheeks. Some competition, if you will, to keep you on your toes. Competition? His voice finally barked out a brusque response. What the devil are you talking about? With a serene smile, I looped my arm through Alex's elbow. Why don't I show you both instead? We swept through the ballroom, Elliot and his trampy mistress gawking like hooked fish at our heels. A bank of French doors waited at the opposite end, where the remainder of my crew hovered in anticipation. Elliot, Marla, welcome to the grand opening of the Chateau Sophia. At my signal, the doors swung wide, revealing the sprawling vista of the property I had meticulously assembled to be bigger, bolder, and infinitely more upscale than their paltry imitation. Their jaws dropped in horror at the sight. You didn't really think I was going to let you prance around with my life's work unchallenged, did you? My eyes glittered with malicious glee. As my new employees swarmed the terrace behind me, a messenger arrived with urgent news for Elliot. His backers were pulling funding over the eleventh-hour competition. The arrogant blowhard gaped at me, the color rapidly draining from his blustered features. I offered a mocking toast of my champagne glass. To new beginnings, darling, welcome to the hospitality wars. The opening months of the Chateau Sophia could hardly have gone better. Our elegant, rustic, chic accommodations and curated experiences were an immediate hit, drawing rave reviews and becoming the area's hottest destination. In stark contrast, Elliot's half-baked Monroe Inn and Resort limped along in obscurity. Their online listings were littered with scathing critiques, shabby decor, subpar amenities, and painfully amateurish service chief among the complaints. Seeing that arrogant blowhard receive his long-overdue comeuppance was more satisfying than I could have possibly imagined. Each scathing review, every vacant room and negative press mention, further cemented his colossal failures as both a businessman and human being. Every few weeks, I would gather my team for an all-hands meeting to align our strategy. More than once, Elliot's petty attempts at sabotaging my operations through underhanded tactics were uncovered and swiftly neutralized. The bastard tried bribing the Campbell family to leave us a scathing review— Renee, my operations lead, told me one afternoon. A contemptuous sneer twisted her lips, as if a wealthy clan like that would ever sully their reputation for a few measly bucks. I waved a dismissive hand, hiding my vindicated smirk behind a sip of coffee. That's just how low Elliot will stoop. He's flailing desperately to stay afloat, but it won't be enough. Sure enough, it was barely two months into our heated battle for hospitality supremacy that the unraveling began. Rumor had it, Elliot was hemorrhaging cash at an unsustainable clip, having wildly underestimated startup costs and failing to gain a foothold in the market. When the foreclosure notices started appearing in the local paper's legal announcements, I couldn't resist a wry smile of triumph. Textbook overconfident arrogance, bulldozing ahead without doing his due diligence. It was so quintessentially Elliot. Later that week, Alex forwarded me a scathing article about the pending closure of the Monroe Inn. Turns out Elliot had stopped paying vendors, staff, and underlying creditors in a desperate bid to keep the facade going. His investors, those few who hadn't already pulled their funding, were going to get hosed. The comments section was a virtual bonfire of schadenfreude, with locals and former patrons alike torching Elliot for his litany of failures. Just desserts for such a prolific liar and cheat. Not long after, I found myself across the polished Alderwood desk from the one and only Elliot Monroe. He was noticeably haggard, the last bastions of his smarmy confidence crumbling under the crushing weight of his debacle. I'm destitute, Harper, he admitted in a hoarse tone, unable to meet my unblinking stare. The business, the investors, it's all gone belly up. I have nothing. The disgraced charlatan finally confessing the depths of his depravity should have felt enormously vindicating. Instead, I just felt hollow, numb to the man whose betrayal had nearly decimated my soul. After everything you did to me, to us, I murmured, gesturing between us, did you really think I was just going to roll over and let you win? His jaw clenched, tendons straining beneath his ruddy skin. I leaned forward, holding his gaze with steely determination. Wake up and face reality, Elliot. You're an arrogant, insecure little man whose own reprehensible actions orchestrated this downfall. 
all I did was give you the chance to reap what you've sown. My office abruptly felt too small, the air heavy with decades of simmering resentments. This confrontation had been a long time coming. Please. The broken whisper escaped Elliot's lips. I waited for the rest, but he seemed to shrink further in on himself, deflating like an untied balloon. In that moment, I realized just how profoundly over him I was. The man had gambled away my love, my loyalty, our life, for his own selfish cravings. He deserved no more of my energy or power. Rising to my feet, I smoothed my hands over my skirt and crossed to the door. I'm afraid there's nothing left to say. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. As Elliot slunk from the office in disgrace, I felt an unfurling sense of finality. Whatever puppet strings had still bound me were severed. My karma delivered. His miserable fate sealed. It was a new beginning in the truest sense. And I had miles more to go before reaching my final form. The warm summer breeze carried the fragrance of freshly bloomed roses and honeysuckle as I stood on the terrace, surveying my personal oasis. After more than a year of stratospheric success with the Chateau Sophia, I had seized the opportunity to expand into a full-service luxury resort and spa. My staff bustled about in crisp uniforms, meticulously prepping for the grand opening gala. Lanterns were strung between marble columns, and sleek white cabanas dotted the immaculate grounds. I inhaled deeply, savoring the sweet air and sense of peaceful accomplishment. This night marked the culmination of a years-long journey, one driven by sheer determination to not just survive betrayal, but to thrive in defiance of it. It's really something, huh, Mom? Alex's voice shook me from my reverie. I turned to find him beaming with pride, Jenna looped through his arm in a cheek sundress. Despite the years and tumult we'd endured, my children still stood staunchly by my side. You've built an amazing legacy, one we're all so proud of. Jenna gushed. Emotions swelled in my throat as I pulled them both into a fierce embrace. Just a couple years ago, our family had been in tatters, each of us suffering the devastating blows of Elliot's callous betrayal. We never could have imagined coming out on the other side like this. I couldn't have done any of this without you two, I said gruffly, blinking back happy tears. Your love and support gave me the strength to keep going, no matter what. We stood together in comfortable silence, cherishing the profoundly transformed trajectory of our lives. The agonizing days of despair and hurt were finally behind us. A gentle rap on the terrace doors signaled an arrival. I turned to find Justin, the new director of hospitality operations, hovering with an uncertain look. Apologies for interrupting, Mrs. Monroe, but he's here, asking for you. My stomach clenched instinctively. I already knew who the he in question was. Taking a steadying breath, I nodded for Justin to send him out. No more than a minute later, the terrace doors parted, revealing a shrunken, haggard figure that had once been Elliot Monroe. His expensive suit hung loosely on his diminished frame, his eyes downcast and swallowed by deep hollows. To put it plainly, he looked utterly, irrevocably broken. Elliot, I greeted with cool detachment, nodding to Jenna and Alex. To their credit, they restrained themselves from any outbursts, simply watching on in stone-faced silence. Harper, I, he began, words failing him as his mouth worked soundlessly. With visible effort, he met my gaze, shame and regret etched into the weathered lines of his face. I just wanted to see the spectacular woman you've become with my own eyes. The strength, the success, you've cemented an enduring legacy while I squandered my own. His laugh was a dejected, hollow rasp. I gambled away the love of my life, my family, in pursuit of cheap vices and ego strokes. A bigger fool has never walked this earth. My first instinct was to rebuff his pathetic wallowing, to dismiss him as easily as swatting a fly. But some deeper pang of crushed hopes gave me pause. Maybe in another life, another reality where he made different choices, things could have turned out so differently for us. But that path was forever closed to him now, his misery entirely self-wrought. You're right about one thing, I said after a loaded pause. This life, this empire, is mine now, one I built from the ashes of the world you burnt to the ground. Elliot staggered back slightly, absorbing the weight of my condemnation. But I won't have you polluting it with your boorishness any longer, I continued, mustering every fiber of dignity. Tonight, I'm surrounded by the people who matter most, my loyal family, my driven team, my esteemed guests. You've been excised from this existence entirely. 
I pierced him with a final, unwavering stare. Now, get off my property before I have security remove you. Without another word, the shell of the man who had once been my husband turned and shambled away in disgrace. A profound sense of closure blossomed within me as I watched him disappear into the gloaming. At long last I had severed the final tether binding me to my anguished past. Ahead lay an open field of possibility, and a hard-won second chance to cultivate the life I deserved. A new chapter was finally beginning.